Hey, this is Michael Crawley with a lot of my friends today for the OSHA Oops podcast today. Thanks for coming on board. Today what we're going to do for you is we're going to review the safety lessons that we have created in the video form over the last few months just to give you a heads up of what's going on in the industry and kind of help you understand, kind of kind of help you imagine, right guys, the, the amount of stuff that uh, you could think of if you're trying to think about what you need to do training on. So what we've done is we put together this and we're going to go over those for us. Sam, what's on our first one for the day, brother? All right, our first one for the day is bathroom procedures, sanitation, and personal hygiene. Uh, this is a good lesson for just about everyone out there, even uh, if you have employees that uh, don't know how to clean up after themselves or just savages, this is a pretty good lesson for that. Yeah. You know, I find this lesson to be a crappy lesson. Um, okay. That's, uh, that's... You, you know, <laughs> when I look at this lesson, I think it is, it is needed, but we can't have people biting their fingernails. It, it, their it is an oddity, and, 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 and we, we really write lessons based on uh, people requesting stuff, right? So yeah. the, the logic to it is somebody's asking for bathroom procedures, sanitation, hygiene. I mean, well, that, that means they've had a problem. That means right. that their hygiene and bathrooms have been so bad that they feel like they're a safety lesson in training is the only way to cure it. So they didn't hear mama's lesson about no. uh, flush the toilet, no. wipe it down, no. do your business, do your uh, thing? Let me tell you this. I'll bet somebody's name is Blamo on this thing here. Blamo. <laughs> yeah, Blamo or, well, I don't want to get into that. So this, this, uh, this spring we went to Italy, didn't we? Yeah. That beautiful Italy. You yes. remember we went to uh, the Pisa? Yep. Remember no. that toilet in Pisa? Oh, it's the, uh, the the toilet without a toilet. The toilet without a toilet. You know, the standing portion on there. You see on the you second had... page? The, oh, the, the, yeah. Now, in, in Italy, they have a standing one. There is just no toilet. There's just a hole in the ground. Awful. That That is... Uh, Shocking. That you did both your businesses in. I don't even want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand that and why you'd want to do that. I I, uh, I, I think the the Japanese toilets are some of the finest, though. Those really got it going on. They, they'll um, do it all. You never want to leave those toilets, and that's no, the problem. That's no. why we can't have them here. People will never leave the bathroom. The bathroom so, becomes the break room. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's for sure. All right, so bathroom procedures, we created that in the lesson. So if you're having problems in the office... I'm not saying we've had a lot of problems in our office. I am saying that we've had some times. Yes. And we've had to review this lesson. So I'm just saying this in video form, if you've got this out there, you really want to take a look at this. And this may be good for your office staff too. So just kind right. of going over it. And I really think this one is one of those that you're like, do we really need this? But I but, don't know. But so based on go ahead, go ahead. So there's so there are some people that come into the country that have different hygiene right. uh, practices than we do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's important that they understand um, how to use the toilet and what to put down the toilet, what what to put down the toilet. Yeah. But but based even based on that, we have seen that even people from America need a reminder I hate to tell here you. and there because our standards are all different at home. All yeah, and, different. and so with that in mind, it is nice to have a lesson that correlates with a company's policies yeah. and cleanliness. Yeah. Right? Cool. Right on. I would agree with you. Some of these other countries, they don't like flushing toilet paper. Oh. And so you, 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 this lesson is not a bad lesson. All right, so here we go. This one is bathroom procedure sanitation. Give us a call if you need something like that. We've got that lesson for you. We wrote that for you guys. All right, the great Rick Roman. What, what's next, brother? We got uh, lamp testing safety. What the heck is that? So what, what? this this lamp was uh, really written for um, uh, one of our specific clients that um, did a lot of actual lamp testing. Um, they it, made lamps and they had to test them. They got to see if they work. They had to see if they work. So when we say lamp, we're talking light, light bulbs? bulbs. Light bulbs. Yeah, right. Light bulbs. Different kinds of light bulbs, LEDs, things like that to ensure that they work. Um, mm. So, well, I think this is a great example of a specific more, lesson more specific. that is really specific to a client and what yes. they're looking for. Because one of the great things about us, and I know, Steve, as you're dealing with the bigger partners and stuff, the reality of it is this is the kind of stuff that they like. They like the fact that they've got a unique company that's right. going around. They're testing lamps or light bulbs, big, all, all different sizes. They're building them. They need to test them. And that process can get a little hairy when it comes to the electrical. Right, Rick? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I mean, like you said, uh, we got a lot of clients that are doing uh, specialty type work that, that other people aren't doing, and, and we're able to write these lessons for your specific needs. You, you know, these kinds of lessons are, are they're unique, but yeah. they're based on 
somehow somebody's had a problem with, with light bulbs or yeah. had an injury or it, something unsafe happened. So, so all got a lot of buzz oh, yeah. electrocuted so, or something. So I would tell you, I would tell you, though it may not be an you know one of our most viewed lessons. Yeah, you know, that's one of the cool things about God safety, right? We've got the obscure lessons. Love it. And this lesson goes over a lot of different things in here. Um, the repetitive motion injury, like Mike said, um, uh, you know, electrical shock, um, yep. ergonomics, all yep. kinds of stuff to, to make it easy for the client to train their employees on this specific task. And let me tell you, I can tell you this. I have burned my hand on more hot light bulbs in my life. Oh, They don't I'm get that hot anymore, do they? they? Not anymore, but I still got old light bulbs, yeah. man. Old light bulbs, you old replace granny. those with LEDs. And I'm not sure they're not the heat lamps instead of light bulbs. You know, Maybe I, remember, I bought the wrong one. When we were kids in Somar, <laughs> when we were kids in Somar, I remember Sam shooting out the light bulbs out of uh, our next door neighbor's house all the time. He was so mad half the dang time. Sam was shooting out with an old pellet gun or a BB gun that he had. So you think Sam never That's shot anything? There was in no LA. proof that I ever did that. Exactly, the, uh, no proof. No, I think he did it. All right, our next lesson we've got is distracted driving. We're, we're going over the distracted driving lesson. We, we, we have lessons on driving, but the distracted portion of it really is something that is kind of pointing out things and reasons why you could be distracted. Rick, what distracts you when you're on the road? Oh, well, there's all kinds of things. Just maybe changing the radio station or just a answering a phone call. Uh, looking at the ladies? See, well, you could be looking at something on the street that's distracting. Let me, let let me, Ricky. Let me add the something homeless. else that could be more, it, it really could be a little, little less obvious, right? Okay. We're driving and everything's fine and it's comfortable, but all of a sudden somebody rolls the window down and lets in a blast of freezing cold air because it's that, winter outside. That, that. And for some reason, he has to have some air come in. That is distracting. It's distracting. Am I wrong on that? No, listen, the cold air coming in the car in the middle of the summer. What about hot? Like, yeah, what about yeah, hot yeah, air? Yeah. You're, it's 100 degrees outside in Arizona. You I open have, the window to I let have in no some idea what he's I don't have any about. idea why this guy's rolling the window down. I think you do have an idea. It's I awful. Don't, I don't Distracted know what driving. We're talking. And with, uh, you know, with technology now, too, a lot of companies have these... Uh, You've got to just take it. Not roll the windows down Look, and sometimes, distract people. Sometimes in the car, there are smells and odors that nobody knows where they're coming Listen, from. They can be distracted. They can be, and you got to let it and deal with it. you got to deal with it, and you just got to envelop it. Am I right, Rick? Well, not exactly. Some of us are more oh. tolerant than others. Well, well the, I the think we need to raise the, the family, tolerance. Family Guy said it well once. Love it, Meg. Yes. Love it. Yes, yes. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for the quote. But distract. Yes. They, I was starting to say you have a lot of, uh, of the new technology with cameras that, that actually can detect things like this. Yeah. Oh, they can. Don't so, so, we have new cameras in our service cars? We oh. have new cameras in our service cars. And, and it detects some, that. Some of our employees get more dings and, than others. And can I tell you this? So this lesson to, to yep. remind them of those things is I will a, not it's a good mention reminder. mention names. Distracted driving in the few experiences that I've had come from individuals more so individuals by themselves in the front seat. I myself was rammed by a guy, and let me tell you this, whether they drop something and, and think that for a moment they can reach yeah. down, right? But when there's somebody next to them, they can say, Bob, can you get this for me? It's a little easier. But when you're alone and you're trying to do everything, work the radio, eat a burger, right? Watch yeah. YouTube. Watching, don't Who's even watching say YouTube watching while they're YouTube. driving. There's right. plenty of so people texting and watching I saw, YouTube. I saw a device that plugs into your uh, USB port. I have port, seen that on social and media. And the device turns my screen into your car into a viewing where you can play movies. It turns into that and yeah, does I have seen it that. I have seen How's that. How's it legal? Well, I don't know if it's legal, but the reality yeah, of it is. I don't think is, that is legal. But you've seen it, right? I have seen what you're saying. I have I mean, actually. That is crazy, thought, right? Well, my gosh. That it, sounds like a great feature. Oh, yeah. All right, settle down, Sam. Settle <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, it okay, is. Then, see. For somebody, not for, not, for us. for not for God's safety, oh, right? Of course not, because we're safe. Absolutely. Safety. True and true. Driving safety, people. Driving safety. Love it. All right. Next lesson we've got here for you on the OSHU's podcast we're going over today is going to be cargo containers. We've got a lot of companies with these cargo containers loading and unloading cargo co containers. This, this doesn't sound as unsafe as you'd think, but sometimes these things have a tendency to move. Rick, you spent a lot of years in the shipping. Tell us about loading cargo containers and the problems that come along with that. Well, one of them is... is uh Depending on where you might be located with weather, it can get extremely hot inside of these things, uh, extremely cold depending on the temperatures. 
Uh, people start climbing in behind freight. You got forklifts driving in and out of them, and you get can get trapped behind. So there's really there's more hazards than than you might think of just off the top of your head, and being able mm. to make you know make sure that you're bringing all these things to light with your folks that are working mm. in there. Uh, help keep them safe. So you don't like getting trapped into places, do you, Rick? Uh, no. What about shutting the door on you in there, just getting a feel about what it feels like to be in there? You're not into yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not necessarily. That sounds terrible. Well, I've seen but... Rick go crazy in an elevator when it gets the doors <laughs> get shut, and uh, he right. gets a little claustrophobic for some reason, Rick. I, uh, we have that. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, go can ahead. Tell Tim. us about why that is. Well, I'm maybe from shell shock from. Previous experiences that I may have had in an elevator. <laughs> no one shall be named, however. Rick, I think I know what you're talking about, and I too am offended by some of those statements. You know, one of the things in these uh, containers is you got to watch out. There are a ton of rusty metal oh, jags yeah. and, and metal. Uh, let me give you, they're not all pristine yeah. and clean, right? And the other thing is could there be diseases, uh, rats, other little Things in there? Insects, spiders. I don't know. Spiders. Come on. I suppose I could. All right. I'm just, hey, I'm just trying to say that you got to watch out for all that. Shipping stuff. containers, unloading. If you have a need for shipping containers, unloading, a lesson. This is a unique lesson that yep. we re re relatively recently wrote. Recently wrote. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate and it's that. it's quite an in-depth uh, This lesson. is an in-depth lesson on it because we found so much information yeah. that, and I then obviously as we create the lesson, we're capable of sending this to the client so the client can really get a take a look at this and say, all right, right, that is the script that I'm really looking for. And that is a benefit. So take a look at this for us. We do have it on a new platform that we just put up called OSHA Light, excuse me, Got Safety Light. Dot com. Got safety like L I T E, and that way we have some sample videos that you can take a look on, but that's a good one there. All right, shipping containers, boys. All right, the next one we've got down here is going to be walking safely. Holy crap, this is a good one. All right, so this lesson on was another client request, and um, it's, it's really for any client that has employees that um, are, are distracted walking. all the time. Um, they don't pay attention yeah. at work. They're on their cell phone all the time watching whatever the heck they're watching. And they're not watching where they're going. They're on construction sites. They're tripping on stuff, falling yeah. down and hurting themselves. Um, it's, it's crazy that we got to teach people how to walk safely. But, but that, that, you brought up the great Tony. It, it is, it, the lesson is because of cell phones and the, the amount of FaceTime we have our, our faces buried in that phone, right? Right. Okay. And what a crime that is, right? And I bet we could see a hundred million YouTubes on people walking into a pole, right? Or into a lake or a fountain or... And we thought this was a crazy lesson when it was requested. Yeah. When it was originally asked of us, we thought to ourselves, okay, right. this is insane. We've hit an all-time crazy level. But as we wrote it and looked at it, we thought, man, this is really important. You've got factories with a lot of distractions, and your employees have cell phones in their pockets. And when they pull that cell phone out and they're taking a look at it, while well, they're trying to get from one machine to another, or they think they have a 60-second walk and they're going to check their cell phone, find their Facebook, look at their TikTok to see some retarded video, that doesn't make sense. In all those logics, they're picking up these phones and they're utilizing them. And so this walking safely, yeah. distracted walking, right. is really something that is more pertinent to most of our clients than totally. we thought in the originally. I'm telling you. Do you. One of the funny things is the first item on this thing when you look at it is daydreaming. Yeah, yeah. What are you thinking about while you're walking that you're going to walk into a fountain or a pole. What, what are you thinking about? Rick, what are you thinking about? I, I can't even imagine, but I mean, even just having conversations with somebody as you're walking, you, you're just not paying attention. You, you just... Seems bad. Yeah. What about a donut? Can you think about a donut? Oh, well, hey, maybe you're eating a donut. I don't even know. Let me tell you something. Plenty of things can there be have been There have been plenty of times I've been uh, thinking about uh, the dinner coming up. A little Brazilian barbecue exactly. coming up. I was just going to say yeah. that. And all of a sudden... Bam! We're headed to New Orleans I mean, on a convention. Head, head first, getting a swirly. Why? And who wants that? Why are you head first? In I'm a just swirly? saying it could happen. You Tripped walk right into a bathroom, into a toilet. Okay, into a toilet. That, that's a that's a tough one. I don't I, think I, you're I, head look, first. You know what? Swirly. We but should I, not put limits on the amount of buffoonery that can happen in walking. Hey, maybe we shouldn't put buffoonery limits, but maybe we can say this. Maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking that your wife isn't good to you. Maybe she's yelled at you. Maybe your kids are doing weird and things. And you're feeling bad. And you're, and you're feeling a little sad. Okay. 
I, I get Maybe that too. your back hair is coming in and it's a little thicker than and you, you want it. you got the back hair and comb over? Uh, You're combing just, the back hair over? You good. got a pompadour going on? Arr! Is it possible to have a pompadour? Oh, from, buddy, uh, you got long enough back hair. You're like a mane, a lion. Roar. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Rick, didn't yeah. Rick have a pompadour from his back? I think he did. At one point. At one really? point. I'm not sure it was a pompadour or a porcupine. It was one of those. It was very bristly. Rick, are, are, is your family hairy, Rick? Uh, not overly. Oh. Compared to I'm not overly well, hairy. Compared to see, a Sasquatch. As you can see. Uh, yeah, but you take off this shirt, you're like a chia pet. Chia-chia-chia. <laughs> chia-chia <laughs> Ricka. <laughs> All right, going to the next lesson here. We've Rica. got chia <laughs> Ricka. All right, going to the next lesson. We've got oh, air quality favorite. safety. My favorite. Okay, I don't know why it's your favorite. Listen. So, Mike, let me tell you this. Oh, hell. This here air quality lesson was created specifically for one of our partners and their client oh, in the you. east. Okay. And the reason was is because all those fires in Canada okay. that were coming down, yeah, yeah, and it yeah, was choking, yeah. and their clients is one of our insurance partners, and they were asking, hey, we need an air quality lesson that just yeah. helps them understand during these Canadian fires, right? So it was well timed. Well, you're they not thought really... they had it bad. If you've ever ridden in the car with Steve, <laughs> I mean, the the air quality there. I mean, he was talking about having warm air. I mean, he, he I... gives plenty of good reason to give these distractions with like warm <laughs> air coming even, in. It's like in category five. Yes. I don't even know what he's saying. I don't either. Now what listen. Back the to the lesson. Please. The lesson here, when it comes to air, I was going to say this lesson was made for Los Angeles, but you're saying it was based on the fires coming it out of Canada. Was. And here's the reason why: because the air quality. The way you see yeah. it there, the smoke coming into, and we saw the news broadcast. You the saw Empire. those where oh, it was floating. I think it's the everywhere, Empire. everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. The so I'll tell you, it works though, Mike. It works for California and Los Angeles and New York. It and does work for those, but it really, the fire, and you know, California, you got to have those fires every once in a while. I think oh. in California, they just oh. go, man, let's just have a statewide campfire sometimes. Oh, believe me, and they start totally. burning it down totally. out there. But I'll tell you this: those Canadians uh, and the fire, that's what kind of spurred this. So. Incredible, and and I was under I I did not understand the particulates and the 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 certain thing and how they rate the smog yeah, and smoke. It's really incredible. It is. It is really very good. Incredible. Sometimes it can get pretty tough. Yes. Uh, eye stingingly tough. Oh yeah. Speaking of the Canadians, I I uh, a. Uh, we we yeah they do a lot of A's which we are not really good at unless we're speaking to the A team. A. Can I get an amen for the A team? You a got an amen. Uh, but they go with the uh, the 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 cheese. What is the cheese with the beef gravy? It's called. Um, it's called the what? Shuba. Oh no, it's not. It's poon. It's, it's uh, poonine. Poontine. 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 Poontine is the name of this, oh, and, and it is not... cheese with gravy. Yeah. Oh. Cheese curds. It's the fried cheese it curds, is, but right? My, but Mike, it's poontine with beef gravy it on it. It is. It's not good. And we know how appetizer. Steve's likes his beef gravy. Oh man, no one look, eats gravy like. It Steve. might be better on fries. Uh, look, gravy is. Uh, oh no, maybe it's on fries instead of cheese. It is, it is on fries. I I stand corrected. It is on fries. Poontine. It's it's everything on fries, right? It's not just. It's a gravy. All kinds of gravies, toppings, things like that. Listen, I they have gravy. a multicultural poutine. Yes, they have a multicultural poutine. It's not Who good. Who doesn't like gravy? Let me tell you, we like gravy, yeah. but when you smother all that crap on there and all the saucy, you've had it. You don't like it. Rick, what let me ask like you it? this question, Rick. It's morning time. Yeah. You're getting breakfast. Mm, yes. You're thinking to yourself, you want some beautiful chicken fried steak and eggs with a little bit of spam what, gravy. What kind of gravy, Rick? Spam. Sausage gravy. gravy. It's sausage, sausage gravy. gravy. Steve, sausage gravy? It's like plaster. No. It's thick. It's gross, flavorless. I want brown Steve gravy. Steve's the only guy I know that puts beef gravy on. Beef gravy. Who's with me? Gravy. Give me an A. Hey. What okay. about biscuits and gravy? Beef gravy? There's a need for sausage gravy. gravy. I don't eat biscuits and gravy. They just need to put more sausage in the sausage Yeah, gravy. maybe that's it, Sam, because I can't take it. But air quality. Lots of sausage. I, I think that white gravy is an American thing. I don't see a lot of other you countries. When we were in Germany, I didn't see a lot of white gravy oh, in Germany. Oh, no, there's brown gravy. I didn't yeah. see a lot of breakfast in Germany. Yeah, you did. Sausage. Frankly, I didn't see a lot of breakfast in Italy either. Their American-style breakfasts were a little tough for us. It was a blended egg. 
It was runny. It was yes. not good. And they I... took spam and fried it. It was the worst thing I've ever had. No, uh, and, and turkey dogs. Bacon. They had bacon, not you, bacon. You got to know bacon. that the four of us travel around the country a lot doing safety. Right. We do a lot of meetings. We right. go to conventions. And we're, we're, none of us are drinkers. So we don't get to have the fun with the alcohol. But what we do is we do like to eat good food. And so yeah. we will travel around and getting this. And the reality of it is some of us like better food than others. Steve doesn't like country gravy, which I don't he know. He doesn't like tell. good food. He doesn't like good food. Well, okay. I'll accept it. Next lesson. Yes. Next lesson we've got out here for you guys. This one is a unique one. Now, this is a one that has a great example about building a lesson, a safety video that is specifically for industries. This is for the film industry, and this is the artificial fog and smoke machines that are out there. Safety with those kind of things. And it's an odd one because we usually buy these for our home play, and we're doing them at home, we're doing a lot, but these fog machines do create hazards, especially in the film industry, that is good to review with some of your backstage help, with some of your guys putting this together, and to be able to have that. But, but now, I don't know a lot about some of the, the chemicals that they use to create fake fog. Not a smoker by trade. Right, I am not, but yeah. let me tell you this. I've been in some of that, and I still don't like breathing it in. I don't care how many times those guys tell me it's fine, it's great. It's full of vitamin C. You I breathe know. this in, you get two grams of protein. Whatever they're telling me, hard to hard time believing. Well, I'm not sure it's got vitamin C in it, that's for sure. Yeah, it probably doesn't. It doesn't have vitamin C. But, Sam, you've worked in the lighting industry and stuff like this. The smog, the smog, the fog and smoke can throw enough in the air where you can't see where right. you're going on. And a lot of times they're using different kinds of fog. Isn't there a difference between the fog that fogs up a room for lasers and stuff and a fog that kind of sits low and rolls so across that, the ground? Um, I think that there's, uh, it's, they have two different kinds. Sometimes they'll use dry ice dry to create. Yeah, they got, got all kinds of stuff and here. Sometimes they, they have stuff. some right. stuff that makes the uh, fog cold oh. when it comes out. So Low to the ground? So that it hangs out oh, I, a little more on the ground. My favorite fog right there. Um, the dry no ice fog. is the dangerous one. That really? could get you. Oh, because um, that's carbon it's monoxide. It's carbon monoxide. But as long as so, it's on the ground, hey, I'm not on the ground. But if you're I'm in a confined it. area with that, yeah. that could uh, put you out pretty good quickly. Good call. Good call. Oh, that is a good call. You don't want to be killed by ground fog, which is Steve's favorite fog. It's my favorite. Ground fog. That, that really is what it is. No, we're getting a lot of business in the film industry, and you guys are having a lot of issues. We were right. just talking about, before we started, the safety issues, the Alex Baldwin thing and stuff that's happened. We're, we're not dying to get into this because of all the things, but let me just say, there's a lot of safety things that need to be looked at when you're on a film industry. Just gun safety right. is one of them, obviously, right. that, that we've seen in the news, in the history. But this kind of thing is also a problem because people are getting hurt in the film industry, and the, the guys putting them together, the, the architects, the uh, the yeah. construction guys, building sets, and all these other things. Right. We can't forget. I know we're all excited about the the artists and stuff. Rick, who's your who's your favorite? Rick, your favorite uh, actor? Actor? Oh my gosh! Oh, heck. Tom Cruise? I'm, no, I'm. <laughs> you gotta love Tommy. Tommy <laughs> Tom Cruise. Jackson. Samuel I guess, Jackson. I guess I'm I'm probably older generation. So Nicole I'm, Kidman. I'm, I'm probably gonna go with you know I I like old Clint Eastwood movies. John uh, Wayne, Clint. We love Clint. Clint's a classic. Clint Eastwood, he's, he's, Charles he's Bronson. He, yeah, Charles Hold Bronson on. was okay. What about Kojak? Oh, uh -huh. well, Telly Savalas. Come on. Yeah, he was all right. Of course, but, you uh, love him, baby. But, but yeah, Stallone. But Clint, do you, oh, I could have killed you. Okay. I could have killed him. You know who my, one of my favorite actors are if we're going to go back that far? Say it. It's going to be Family Affair. The old movie Family Affair, Johnny Whitaker on Family Affair. Oh, God. <laughs> I tell you this. I love one of my favorite He is films. your favorite boo. I think I had a lunch We need box. to have a, a hit for Johnny Stinkin' Whitaker on yeah, this show one day. We gotta, yeah, we got to love that. Family we salute Affair. him. I love Johnny. We happen, to, we happen to have some personal connections uh, to that. Well, well maybe man. we do. Maybe we don't. But the reality of it is he's still one of our favorite uh, actors from the I, 70s. I, I, right? I did enjoy uh, Sigmund the sea monster when everybody loves Siggy Sigmund and the sea monster Tom Sawyer <sighs> the classic Tom I know I don't even I, classic it brings a tear Sigmund to my eyes stop it monster. no crying on this show uh, it no was crying. yeah Sigmund yeah, so, was the sea monster. Right, yes. So if you have an industry that's specific and you need some specific let's right. the industry, think right. about us, remember us, we can create this for you. There really is no charge for us to create these specific lessons for you, especially when you're on our service. Right. Uh, if you're not on our service, there may be a small charge because we, we don't do things for right. free. But if you're on our monthly subscription and on God Safety Light, you can go there, find out the details, or just give us a call. The reality of it is these specific lessons are really what we want because this is how our library bu builds. We have thousands thousands of lessons and videos and everything, and this is how we build our library based totally. on what you guys are looking for. Because 
who's better to know the safety out there in these facilities than you guys that are out there? If Absolutely. we were out there, we could help you with it, but we're not always on no, site. I mean, that's a tough one, right? Hard. Tough one. Totally. All right, the next one we've got going on is crossing the road safety. Now, <laughs> this one seems a little elementary, and I get it because... It, it is not. But it is not. And a lot of times, and I'll start this one out to get the conversation going, a lot of times what we find is people in Los Angeles will have two different buildings that they're working out of, yep. and they're across the street to each other. And they'll be crossing all day long with a, yep. with a host of different yep. things. Yep. Sam, you see this problem a lot in the industry. When so, you're there. Um, yeah, there you'll find... Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yeah, I thought we had it on. Uh, what happened to vibrate radio? I, I did. Yeah. No, yeah you think, can you answer that? That's your no, wife. That's your wife. No, you got to answer your no, wife. I'm not going to answer it. You answer oh, your wife. No, no, I, you I can't to, not answer your wife's her. call. I'll have to tell her later. She has this un uncanny. <laughs> that was oh. the sound for your wife, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, for <laughs> those who don't know, that's Dragnet. That's a red alert. That means I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because your wife's calling you, Rick. Well, if she's yeah. calling me, I'm probably in trouble. Yeah. Okay. And with a capital T, and that rhymes with P. <laughs> Stop singing trouble, music, man. Trouble, You're going to get trouble, a, trouble, trouble, Come on, who trouble, doesn't know trouble. that, right? All right? So in Los Angeles, you'll run into this a lot where you'll have uh, warehouses or storage facilities on different sides of the streets where yep. forklifts are cooking across the road all the time. Nobody looking. People, the employees are walking back and forth. Sam, have, um, you, have you heard of issues with chickens? Mm. Chickens. Crawl. Crossing the road? Yes, they, they were okay. probably He was insulting. just trying to get to the other side. Okay, okay. Right. Um, another thing that you're going to find this lesson for is, let's say, landscapers. They're in the middle of the road, and a lot of times they're yeah. moving from their vehicle on one side of the road yeah. into a median um, to do some work, and they're crossing the road both sides. They're not watching where they're going. Um, construction. You know, uh, we so there's a lot of industries that this lesson could be good for. We have a lot of clients that are on oh, all cabled here. I'm all verklempt. We have clients that have a lot of schools, you know, built into it. And I can only imagine crossing the road um, has a lot to do with uh, schools and kids and parents picking up kids. And yeah. anyway, it's tough. I agree. Yeah. So this is a lot more. Think outside the box with this. Cross, crossing the road safely sounds like a very elementary school one, but I'm going to tell you, like Sam said, there's a lot of things going across the road, a lot of environments. This may not be necessarily a street. could be an alley or something that you're coming across. So, yep. so right. take a look at that. If you have issues with that, let us know yep. we've got going on. This one is coming up more and more, this next one. Okay. Yeah, Steve, what do you got to say, brother? Well, I was just saying, look out for cars, right? Oh, yeah. Remember, yeah, come on. Uh, you're, you're going to not get hit by a, a horse or a carriage. You're you're going to get hit by a vehicle, you got to look out for cars. If you're going to be hit by a car, though, yes. what car would you like to be hit I'd by? I'd like to be hit by a bus or a diesel. Really? Yeah, wipe me out. Something me final. Out Make me, yes, end it. Something final. I want to be in the better place. What about a Ferrari? So you roll slightly oh, sure. up and over. I live maimed, some kind of, you know, hapless, you know. Maim, kill me. Wipe me out. My kids get the insurance and everything's great. I've only That's hit... That's a better way to do it. I would say. Have you ever hit anything with your car before? I'm afraid I have, Mike. I, I hit something a few years ago. I hit a deer up coming oh, home from the mountains. I was there in the car! And let me just tell you, you weren't there in the car, but uh, it was a terrible... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in the car? No, when we hit the deer, I hit the deer and those guys came by. I think you've hit... Two deers, then. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I only ahead. hit one deer. What deer did you hit? Yeah, let's let's not do that. We here. hit a There's bird evidence. the other day that was in the grill. Sorry, right, right. it was a long time ago. But Anyways, this deer, it was. It listen, it it really scared the shabakles out of me. I I just didn't know really what happened. Right. And uh, as I'm sitting there, it it was really an unfortunate thing. It total really did a lot of damage to the front of the F-150. But boy, getting hit by a car didn't sound pleasant. I yeah. actually hit a, a coyote on the freeway one time. Did you? Traveling at high speeds? I was traveling and... Uh, and he ran across the freeway? He actually came down to the edge of the freeway. I swear that thing looked me right in the eye and came to a stop. So I let off my brake because he seemed to be stopping. And as soon as I let off my brake, he decides to make a run for it. And uh, he didn't quite make it. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry to hear too bad. Me. That coyote had a had a hard day that was day. Was there a road runner he was chasing? Well, he could have been. I don't know. I just know he stopped. Me, me. Did you get a right did you me. get a bounty for it? 
Oh. Uh, no, because that, uh, they don't offer those there uh, oh, on yeah. the 14th. Well, you'd have, to take his, okay. you'd have to take his jaw and, right. and, and, and a foot. They're uh, speaking of, in, in the state of Utah, there's a bounty when you uh, right. kill a, a coyote. It, right. it is because of the farming community, of right. course. It is not an inhumane thing. They're, 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 they're very over plentiful. With them. They're totally. very plentiful. Totally. 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 All right, so the next lesson we're getting to is something that pops now and then. This does create a bit of an issue. It is solar panel cleaning safety. With the industry going really wild and everybody's neighborhoods being pounded and knocked on with solar people trying to sell us solar all the time, and God bless the solar panel people, we love them, there is an industry popping up about cleaning these things after a few years with the dust, the debris, and that. And if you don't clean your solar panels regularly, I know that it does cut down the amount right. of... Efficiency efficiency or absorption that they do. So you're cleaning these panels and that we got called and we needed the solar panel cleaning thing. You know, I get that the that the 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 problem is sometimes these panels are really high, right? Yeah, really and to clean them, but you know what? I'll tell you this, some of those panels look hotter than crap. I mean, hot. hot. Have you more, ever been to Vegas? You know how we drive to Vegas and we go past that one point where no. the solar panels are focused at one place and it is, it's like frying the air, right? The air is 200 degrees or something. Yeah. Crazy. No. So, and, and they have a lot of um, different options for yeah. uh, cleaning the solar panels safely. Like, right. what kind of fall protection should I use? Right. Do I need fall protection? Do I need an aerial lift? Would that work best? Hmm. Uh, so these go into a lot of those uh, kind of questions. Working on the leading edge solar panels type stuff. They're putting them on all sorts of things. Right, right. They're not roofers, but they're not electricians. Totally. They don't fall into certain categories. They, right. they have fall protection of framing right. is too high. Right. Roofing is too high. So if you're a solar guy and you're using fall protection standards, do not look at roofing at all because the OSHA system especially, Cal OSHA, does not look at you and define you as a roofer. Mm. You're, you're one of those odd uh, industries that is still trying to get its foothold and you don't have a section in any sort of OSHA code yet specifically for solar panel installers or cleaners for that matter. Man, that's so tough. You're still tough. at the seven and a half feet. You're at seven and a half feet. Seven and a half feet. All right, guys, here we go. We're moving on to the next lesson. This one threw me off when we first saw it. Uh, Rick, can you read this one for us, brother? It's, um, meter pits, bee safety. Oh. Bees, Sam. Meter so, pits. So we. this is a, another uh, lesson that was requested by a client, and um, this particular client had a lot of problems with uh, active beehives in the strangest places. And <laughs> uh, this is one of those strange places. Um, where the meter guys would come in, open these lids, and uh, they'd be attacked by bees that are uh, making a hive in these meter ah! boxes. So when we were kids, I know we had a meter pit in front of our house, that little thing that had yep. the gas and stuff, and if mom and dad didn't pay the bill, they shut it off, you know what I mean? I, I, yep. Uh, but the reality is there was always weird things in there. You never wanted to put your hand yeah, on those spiders. Bees. Right, you see black widows maybe, yeah, but not but bees now, usually. Now it depends on where you live, you're right. right. It depends on the environment. I will tell you this, bees, I'm moving my daughter. There's a car that's been parked in this spot in her complex. For several months, okay. the bees had harbored the side mirrors, had oh. built inside the side. In back of the adjustable mirror? Oh. Is that crazy? No, I, that's I've nuts. never even heard of that before. I, neither have I until I went and my daughter's friend has this car and she can't get rid of it because the bees on both sides had little Hivies. hives in there. I had to go get hornets and, you, you know, need the, the bee whisperer. Oh, it's something. Is there a bee whisper? Yeah, that blonde lady. All right, I know. She's nope. been on Joe Rogan a few Also, times. if you have smoke, you know, smoke makes them. I guess you could smoke down. if you have smoke. Sam, you're a vapor. Can you blow smoke into a bee and tame it? Um, Are you a bee tamer? A, it's, it's, a little, uh, it's a little risky. Yeah, it really is. I will tell you this. Can you tame a, a bee risky. with vape, or do you need actual wood I think smoke? smoke? I think but, the, but, but the, they're not having a campfire and blowing it. They have a smoke yes, machine. Yes, they do. So can vape I, I think vape is I smoke. Think the nicotine, I think it's, the nicotine yes. would get them a little uh, Excited? anxiety. Oh, oh. Might Angry. get them excited and burn, sting your lips. Maybe there's a marijuana vape that you can blow I, in. I oh, well, then that stings. might work better. I hate it. 
No, I'm not a bee guy. I, I know. It. I know we need bees to eat. You know, they do a lot of I pollinating. Do, I agree. God bless the pollinators. I just don't want them in the meter pits. But you know, getting it in your meter pit is or in not any a good, other pit. Well, no, any other pit. But you know, there are some mm. bees that like to burrow, and they're they're not really living a tree oh, no, bee no, no, the for, uh, the for burrow poop bee. Burrow, but the burrow oh, bee. I don't oh, know if that's a proper gosh. term to call it the burrow bee. Well, we're not proper. They're bee like uh, they, close, I think. But they they, they dig. They go into grounds. Oh. They they do hives into grounds. Underground bees. The UBs. Usually like desert bees. Every, oh, every time we bees. go to the East Coast, we're going to see our mind. I'm going to go see my nephew in, in, in Louisiana. Yep. They got bugs over there. You guys freaking got bugs on the East Coast. Mississippi? You <laughs> could things. ride some of those bugs. Listen, ride these them, bugs are them. so big they could teach you the gospel. I mean, these things are really hey. huge bugs you guys got that out there. That is a big insect. Okay. You know what bug I would like to see? Tell me what bug. I'd like to see a light bug. You've not seen those la the light bugs? Fireflies? I've never seen fireflies. I've oh, never seen a firefly. I've never seen a firefly either. I have. Did it change your life? It was fun for the first 10 minutes. And then what? Well, then it was swatting them. Yeah, they're, they're in my face. <laughs> you know, get out of here. It was great for a minute or two, and, and now you can't have it. I can't take it. All right. Speaking of uh, bugs that light up, we're talking about diabetic oh, emergency. Oh, crud. All right. Diabetic. diabetic emergency. And that rhymes with bug. I don't think it does. But the diabetic emergency lesson is something happening because we got a lot more people that are diabetic now. Oh. Is this something that's getting worse, you think? Oh, totally worse. And there's, a, there's a, it seems to be a thousand levels of diabetic, yeah. pre-diabetic, uh, stage one, two, three. I, I don't even know how many stages. I'm not, I, I am diabetic, by the way. But I'm, you I'm, are diabetic? I am, I'm one of the lower stages. You don't take diabetic. medicine for it? I, I do take medicine for it. A diabetic medicine? Yes. Steve is a man who takes at least 50 pills huh. a day. I'm not I sure mean, what he's talking about. There's okay. supplements. He there's does. supplements. He I'm does. sure out there there's a lot of people taking supplements. I don't know if people are taking as many supplements as you. Um, do you, do you like put them all in your mouth? Handfuls. Do you put them in your mouth, chew them up, and do a paste and swallow them? That's oh what my I gosh, do. That is sick. Yeah, that's Ugh. not good. When it comes to the diabetes issues, you don't really know if your employees are diabetic or no, not. You don't. Because you're not walking around going, hey, diabetic, diabetic, diabetic. But, but really, the problem is, and you can't gauge it based on what they look like on the outside. As oh, no. a chunkier guy, you would think I'm diabetic. I have never been diabetic or had any problems with that. Not yet. Steve and I are basically the same weight. And uh, we're very sexy men. But the logic of it is mm -hmm. he, his body is responding different to it. Maybe yes. it's because he's taking old. all the supplements. He's older, look, maybe. Look, I prefer he's a little bit more, more mature. Aged. I prefer seasoned. But yes. A little more gone through, maybe? Yeah. More gone through. Not gone through. So I don't have it. Sam, diabetic? So I'm not diabetic, but I think it's a uh, good lesson for everybody to know what uh, a diabetic emergency looks like. Uh, we've, we've all seen those uh, cases on YouTube where a guy gets pulled over, uh, tased and dragged out of his car, for drunk driving or something, and it finds out that he's just having a diabetic emergency. Yeah, we've got to know what they look like, and you got to be prepared for these because you got so many employees that could be diabetic out there, and they're taking the new shots, they're dealing with them, they're trying to. I think that new. What's that new shot out there? Well, there's there's Ozepic, Trulicity. Yeah, yeah, and those kinds. So we have some employees on those shots, yep. and some of them are doing very well with them, and some of them are getting a little stomach sick. Now, I right? I, I will tell you that. Whether you're in an office or something, it is, to Sam's point, it is good to know. In our office, it's easy to know, right? We have, we have people that ask for certain kinds of sodas or, or snacks, right, that we provide yes. that are diabetic, that fit into their, their nutrition regimen, right? But, I mean, if somebody's having a problem, it's nice to know. You don't need the entire history, but we need to know what's going on. Like, Shelby, uh, I just said her name, oh, probably said shouldn't her name. have. What are you doing here? What but the key doing? is... We have somebody who has a nut allergy. That we won't mention. Okay? <laughs> that we're not going to mention. It's not Shelby. Okay, God bless her. I meant. We're not talking about Shelby. Shelby. Shelby like Belby. Okay, what are okay, you doing? The point is, there's a huge nut allergy. Yeah. And even even open walnuts can cause a problem. So we just got to be aware What was that, that snack I bought the other day? The uh, baklava. Baklava. Oh, yeah, the way you said well, that. Did you have flour? I or did love you say baklava. baklava. It is delicious. Isn't it, isn't it pronounced with a little baklava. bit of umph? Well, you can if you, baklava. Um, if you a, don't know what you're saying, you it's can. It's a Klingon word. Oh, it is a Klingon word. 
I've never been a fan of baklava. No, I've I don't know. Either. It's like an oily little crispy, somewhat crispy. It nutty, is crispy. Yeah, I love yeah, the baklava. I, I, they I are know. good. Sam, it's I it's okay. I love them. Sweet for Sam me. doesn't. It's, uh, in fact, often it's not sweet enough. It's very nutty. I don't understand what I'm chewing on. I, You're I, chewing I, on pecans and nuts and walnuts and several crispy layers of pastry. I feel like I'm eating a yeah. pecan pie without any pecans, pecans or are, pie filling. It's right just on. like a gooey crust. Nobody likes that. You gotta get a good one. My wife They're loves delicious. it. My wife loves it. All right, it, so. I've never had a good one. But the problem is the other pastry I've never really gone with is uh, a cannoli. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I, I've had cannolis all over the listen, place. I haven't I've found one that I really enjoyed. I've tried it, but I I'm not a ricotta not, guy. I don't know why we're putting sugar in ricotta. I mean, it's I just, have not had a cannoli. Never had the, no, the cannoli, a little no, roundy I thing. I like that. I'm not even sure what the <laughs> means, but I'm on it. And speaking of not very delicious uh, pastries, we'll have an opportunity next week uh, for beignets. You know what? I reject that. I love a good beignet. Okay, listen. I do Look, love a it's beignet. It's a crazy <laughs> donut with powdered sugar but on like it. Every no. beignet. But like every dessert I'm you ever eat, in it's the about face. how it's prepared. If they pull the beignets out of a, a drawer that's been in there for two hours, yeah, it's probably going to ah, be. We crappy. went to the king of beignets, freshly made. They were they weren't freshly made. They I were not freshly no, made they out they there in New Orleans. We're we going to go. The place, the but it wasn't the, the bon, made. not the Bonton. Uh, let's have a moment of silence for the Bonton. Okay, Excellent moment. restaurant. I feel bad about that. Yes, they're gone. All right, that's it. What was that other place? It well, was they were they, they were, were like the renowned. I forgot. It's the one on the strip. Place. I don't know what the beignet place is. The point is, they were not fresh at night. We did, and that was unsafe. The rats were so big walking through New Orleans. They were cat-like. They were, they were cat-like. We did they were al alligator-like. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we're moving on from diabetic. We're going to the next one, which is a unique lesson that has been asked for us. This, oh. this lesson is the cooking lesson for the manufacturing of food industry. It's bagel divider. Right. Everybody, Everybody loves needs. a bagel. Which Everybody loves a good bagel. What is this? Tell me about it. Somebody a bagel divider? Me. Yeah. Oh, Sam, it divides I, bagels. I, I can tell. So oh, this please. is on in the manufacturing gotcha. section of the yeah. bagels, okay. and it's dealing with the dough. Okay. Um, so it, it separates the dough into you Comes know, out bagels. in a big long roll, and it cuts. It divides it. And it into divides it into bagels. Bagel yes, Steve. Chunks of dough. That's what this machine does. Yes, Steve. Hey, who knows what a bagel divider is? It sounds well, like it's, it's a cutter of bagel. It divides the bagel. Oh, In here, it's a dough cutter. I get it. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. It doesn't really need the dough. It just kind of separates it out. and no, it just cuts the dough. Cuts yes, it, 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 it portions it, it out it. and divides it into like a portion. Portion. I can see how that could like be dangerous. Like a bread slicer, if you would. I see how that could be dangerous. Yeah, anything that comes down with knives and uh, shears off pieces of uh, dough or flesh. The oh. It's dangerous. <laughs> the greatest thing since sliced bread. Nice. Ouch. Okay. So when you have this at a facility, and think about doing a Google search. You're in a facility. Yes. You may be in HR. You're the safety gotcha. guy. Gotcha. And you need to do some training on bagel dividing safety. Think about your Google search. Your your options are going to be very low. Eh. I highly doubt you'll it's, find anything. God's going to have very low show. But God's safety has got the lesson on bagel divider safety. Now, this was requested. The client is on our monthly subscription, which right. is low cost. We won't divulge what they're paying. But then they asked for this. We wrote this for them put it in English, and then we made a Spanish version at no charge. So this is really a hey, unique lesson. Hey, I got a question. Yeah. But I need that lesson in uh, French. Can you do it in French? Shockingly, we have just discovered a way to do it in French. Now, it, we can do it in about 100 different languages yep. at this point. Yep. Steve's team is putting this together. There is a small fee that we're doing to put it. I think it's $30. Yep. So if we have a lesson that we've already made and you need it in a specialized language, we're charging an extra $30. Now, it is a dub. It may look is a little it? what we call kung fu from the old wonky. days of, of that. But, but if you're looking for something in oh. Punjabi or Vietnamese, Punjabi or Vietnamese, there is just not a lot of options. Uh, for I you. would agree. And this is uh, this is really an option that you're going to want, so give out. us a call for that. I couldn't agree more yeah. for the price, too, for the price. No, you can't beat it for the price. That's good. Bagel, bagel dividers. I do love a good bagel. Right now, we just got a new bagel company bagel. in town, oh. the, the Western Bagels. Yeah. No, uh, Einstein's Einstein. Bagels. Excuse me. Very Einstein tasty. Bagels. Very tasty. And by the way, they're not a, a supporter and a sponsor of this program, so you gave them free advertising. No, they're not a supporter or sponsor of this, but, but if they they'd like to, reach out to us, please. Yeah, please. Like to. <laughs> they, don't, they don't make salt bagels. No, they don't do a lot of salt bagels. Mm. But what we every other place does. Yeah, but there, there's okay, so what are you many doing? other. We just asked for them to sponsor bagels. us, and now you're criticizing no, their need for salt bagels. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Bring it. How much salt does a man need? Believe me, enough on a bagel. Your body needs salt.
Needs so it. what we like is we like the everything bagels Flavory or the drink. four cheese bagel. Love those, love those. Juice. And then we went to Costco and picked up the everything bagel seasoning. Oh. oh. And then we sprinkle that, that is, on the bagel, the cream cheese portion. Everybody's that, a fan of that. I invent they should be, we should honor them. It's it should be good. a holiday for it the is. bagel seasoning man. And that way Woman. you can have more salt. Bagel divider, people. Bagel God, divider. Love it. All right. And the next step. The 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 next step. Go ahead. Oh yes, Rick. The next step is toilet bowl cleaning safety. Oh. Specifically talking about the cleaners of toilet bowls and how aggressive these things are. Listen. Good night. I want you. I want to. Sh I want. Why do they have this. to be so aggressive? Let me tell you why. Because things in the toilet bowl are grimy. They stick. I don't care what that porcelain is. Things stick to it. You can't get it off. I'm not telling you what it is, but they don't come off, and you need acid-like stuff to get it off. Kablamo. That word, kablamo, should be in the dictionary. Shotgun effect. We all know what kablamo was. I don't think we need to talk about that. Listen, when I was a younger father and my boys were young, I tried cleaning a toilet and showing my boys how to do it, because that's oh. what we do. We show them. And I put some cleaning in, cleaner in there, and the bottle was at the end. And I sprayed it, and then I ran out, and I needed more. So I went and got a different brand altogether, and I think it was a different chemical. Because when yeah. I squirted it in there, Ugh. and those chemicals mixed, it made a very pungent, strong fumes. And I had my Papers, three man. little boys that were very close in age, really close to the toilet. And before they knew it, they are, their skin Dropping was off, white right? as ghost. Now, they didn't pass out, but I'm telling you, I had to get them some fresh air. It, this bowl cleaner could be deadly to you, depending on what's so going let me, on. So let me just say this. It's not just the using of the toilet no. that creates the problem. A lot of cities have hard water. Yeah. A lot of cities have those water, and then yeah. you get yeah, the hard water stains. Let me tell you this. You don't want to use chemicals? Pumice stones. You know the stones that we use to clean your pool tile sometimes? It works on the porcelain, scrapes those stains right away. But believe me, you got to put a glove on. you got to get your hand in there. You're getting a pumice stone inside of a toilet? Well, they yeah, come in. A, they actually come a toilet one with a wand. It's a stick. It's about that. And long. it's a stone. It's a it's a pumice stone that you 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 put against the uh, porcelain, and it removes the stains like brand new. But again, you're going to grind that thing until. Yeah, you, but they have chemicals that will take away stains. Some, not some of the hard water. Can't stains. you soak it a little bit? You know, you they can got, try it, but that's about, again the fumes. Yeah. If you're what allergic about, to it. what about lime away? Here's the problem. If you're allergic Lime to some of those away. fumes, Mike, Mike just showed how he endangered his whole family by trying to clean the toilet. The point being is, if sometimes you, you can't do it. If you cleaned your toilet on a regular basis, you wouldn't have stains in it in the first place. Sam, there is some truth to that. Sam could say, I just never lived in an or area that had that hard, hard water. water. I just never lived in a spot. Oh, right. We live in it here now in Cedar City. Utah has hard water. You believe me, toilets. We have a toilet back here. Go look at that one. No, that is a warehouse toilet oh. from the previous owners. It's... Not a good That toy. thing's out of order. Anyway, my point is <laughs> hard water does order. discolor. It does discolor the toilets. You're right. I'm proud to continue. say we've got the cleanest toilets in the I business here at God's Safety. In the biz. Is that the toilet biz? That If there is a toilet biz, we've got We're some top of the biz. Toilet. We're top of the biz. I love that. Toilet, toilet I love being areas. clean. What happened? What are you let's doing? Let's move on. Nothing. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so here's the next one we're talking about. But, hey, but hold on. I'm holding. One more safety thing about cleaning the toilets. People are using all kinds of stuff to clean toilets now. It's not just chemicals, things you spray. It's fun things that look like Starburst, things that look like a nice little peep. They strap to the side of the toilet, and when water runs down it, it looks like a refreshing little orange candy. You can't have people back in there and grab it. All right, you're reaching. I don't know anybody that's point. putting candy in a toilet. It's not a good point. What or things look like a Starburst? You got, if you got, if you got young kids, you don't want them reaching in and this. taking a bite of the... Uh, kids are eating gum off the tables. I look at this juicy fruit thing on the side. Oh, my gosh. Uh -uh. You got weird kids. Hey, I'm just not my kids, but somebody's kids. It smells fruity. Thank you, Sam, for agreeing. Next lesson is really assigned to the construction industry. It is excavation soil grades. This next lesson is obviously one that was requested, but we've had it for a while, but more of an update that we've got going on. You know, there's three types of grades of this earth, and wanting to know which ones you deal with. <laughs> Sam, here in Utah, what grade do we usually have where we're at? Um, so we usually have um, a, uh, a type A soil. Yeah. More, yeah. more clay. It's mm. a lot more clay here than anything else. What's a type B soil then? Well, that's a good question. Type oh. B soil, I'll just, we, we have it down here. Oh, You'll see it? down so there. So that would be more like down in Vegas where it's more granular. And 
Yeah, and here in Utah, we've got this place down in St. George, Utah, that is a dinosaur exhibit, and it's basically a wow. dinosaur footprint exhibit where the clay actually encased and trapped just the footprint of the dinosaur and kept it all those years. I, it is amazing how well this clay can stick you to the ground. I mean, you get in shoes, a pair of shoes in this clay mud, you're not washing these things off. That that red, that heavy iron-based mud, that clay that yeah. just will stain right. and destroy anything. We've got Sticks. some serious dirt out here. Sticks to everything. Hanging out here is like going to Cars Land at Disneyland. We have a lot of red, that red rock, yeah. you know, the arches. People, hey, people love the look through. of it, but boy, you're digging through it. If you have to plant in it, it's a Stains nightmare. Stains everything. It does. It yeah. does. Very stainy. Especially your teeth if you're into eating dirt. Oh, if you're into dirt. Yeah. What if what if you're digging in a uh, in a in a sand pit that was used by cats? Is that is there any kind of a, a lesson for that? No, we don't have a lesson to dig in a sand pit I mean, used you, by you cats. Pull up, you, the guy's a holding. Box. I'm just okay. saying, Sam. Guy's holding up a big blob of something. How do we know what that is? Could be a biohazard. All I can tell you I, is you don't have a need for cats. Nobody wants cats. Okay. We, we don't even like listen, cats. Listen. Cats don't like us. Now, now, let me just say this. As the, they don't even like people. As the in-between, there are some folks watching this that you, are going to be cat you, lovers. You, you believe you're the in-between? <laughs> no, but I'm playing it now. I'm playing it. Look at him. How, how dare he? He's only All right, only. so we've got the grade soil. If you need grades <laughs> lessons on this, we've got a video in English and Spanish. Even if your guys are not really the guys digging, they still need to be aware of this. Right. This is a great right. lesson to be able to put into it. If you're a member of the Got Safety app system, we can make playlists for you that we can put into play that you can have this. These playlists can be for guys on the job site, office duties, framers, yeah. whatnot. And I think this should be really, really in one of the playlists just to go over soil grades and understand just a basic understanding of soil grades and Perfect. stuff like that. We got a lot of things going on here at Got Safety. We're always growing and trying to take up some new things. You'll find here at Got Safety, we'll have everything that you need right down to animal carcass and waste disposal. Ugh. We get a lot of this with people that have warehouses, basements under houses, golf courses, uh, road construction. You know, I, we talked about me hitting that deer. The deer actually did pass away and uh, really ruined the front end of my F-150. And uh, I felt so bad about this animal because I got to see it on its last part of its life. I ended up stopping on the side of the road. But you know, what do you do with it? What, what well, do you, you do had a good dinner animals? afterwards, though. We good. didn't eat the, I'm not a fan sure? of venison. Okay? I don't know. I, I, I don't thought get you it. Ate it. I don't like it. And I yeah. know you say it depends on how you cook it. Steve likes to soak things that are disgusting in buttermilk, mm -hmm. thinking he can do hey. something with it. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's not there, good. You know, it's you not know good. what I'm saying? But this is, this is carcasses like maybe a diseased animal. Is that yeah. what we're talking? Like a, a dead dog or a dead uh, cat on your construction site yeah, or something like that. Or dead rats. Or you've got a right. possum like uh, was in the pantry. Ar uh, armadillo. That they shot with a twenty two. Armadillo. Remember that? Oh, yeah, we had a pantry in it when we were kids. Uh, if you don't know, Steve, Sam, and and uh, myself are brothers. Rick is a been with us for 20 years. He's a brother of us too, uh, more of an adopted guy. But because he was bald and he had a hairy back, we thought, why not? We'll bring him into the club, right? I mean, it's okay. He's mutant like. So animal wow. waste disposal and stuff. You got a lot of things going on, and even if you don't think the animals are. Uh, d diseased at all, oh. you know, there's a lot of ticks and stuff that totally. you're on there that you really don't know. And, and, and so having a lesson like this, yeah. especially when you're not dealing with people that deal with this a lot, is an important piece to have. I yeah, can't agree more, disposal. especially when we, is this, this is, was this slated uh, in your thoughts more for the construction sites where people, or, or like apartment complex where people are, are, are happening upon some it's dead a, carcass? It, it was or anything. It's really, uh, I think it was from a construction yeah. uh, client, yeah. but um, it was written to um, work for manufacturing, um, all kinds of different buildings, but really construction and, you know, You just don't want to pick them up like with that. your bare hand. You really want to. The first time I really heard about this being a problem was with a golf course for my shelf, oh. and they had something that died on the end, on the side of a fairway, and the guys were trying to get rid of it, yeah. but the maggots and everything had uh. gotten to it already. So they wanted a lesson regarding this, but it applied to so many other industries yeah. that yeah. people weren't really thinking of. I mean, if you're an electrician and you're working in uh, right. raised foundation homes and you're crawling right. under places, oh. this also becomes a factor for that. We can't say the word maggots anymore. It's, just, it's getting gaggy. I'm getting a little... 
All right, next lesson is management lesson. We have a series of lessons that are really gauged for management in our, in our library, and they're basically to teach your supervisors and your management kind of things to look out for, things to watch out for. We have a line on sexual harassment, implementing COVID, COVID procedures, really anything you can think of that we go, this is really for a higher level. This lesson is that higher level lesson that we think that is really for management, and it does hang around a controversial topic, I think it's less controversial nowadays, oh, it don't is. you think? I do. It's getting, people are getting more used to this. States, more states are now adopting cannabis rules. And, and it laws. is cannabis. They this do. is a cannabis security safety lesson. Right. Cannabis security safety lesson. Now tell me this. What is it about this lesson? Is it, is it the need for security for cannabis? What is it about? So the state has um, some specific rules yeah. that uh, employers have to follow when they do this sort of uh -huh. thing. So this lesson um, goes over a lot of those rules um, and a lot of suggestions on um, what an employer has to do to keep the security of their facility. You don't realize it, but when you become a grower of cannabis or a distributor of right. it of some kind, there are these rules that you have to do with the security, and they become an unsafe thing. I mean, marijuana is still a something that is sold on the streets illegally at this point, and uh, the reality of it is there's a lot of people that want to steal it. I, I mean, I think you can buy it relatively cheap now anywhere you go. We live next to Vegas, and so there's a lot of dispensaries where we're at. We're probably a little bit more numb to it since we're running through Arizona, Nevada, and is Arizona a uh, cannabis friendly? It is. It is. So the three states we really do a lot of running through is California, Arizona, and Nevada. And those three states are very cannabis friendly. And there's a lot of people that yeah, use it for medical and a lot of other stuff. So we have a library on cannabis products right. of just uh, not obviously how to use them at all, but more like the safety working in these environments, grazing the plants, getting it on your skin, and all that stuff, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide. in the growing yep. places. Well, these places, the, the, the cannabis places, I, I'm sure the growing places, but I know that the places that I've visited on occasion, those, uh, what are those called? The, the place where dispensaries. you buy dispensaries. They're like a Fort Knox. You, they are. They, they've got security tighter than anything I've ever seen. Yeah. So, so to have a lesson that talks about management, just yeah. kind of reminding them about these yeah. things that are going on, I'm sure you're not hiring anybody that's going, well, we know nothing about security when it comes to this. Right. I know you're hiring specialty, but this is a great reminder to everybody, even so that you can get it in your heads. That's right. Yeah. All right, cannabis management, safety, security. Love it. I think France is having a hard time with this next one. I heard on the Ugh. news that a lot of them are having Ugh. problems about this. Bed bugs, people. We're talking about oh, your no, fave no, and mine. No, let me say this. Bed bugs. Vegas is uh, some of the outline. The bigger hotels are very on it. But I've seen articles that talk about some of the low-lying hotels in Vegas because they get a lot of out-of-town or a lot of foreigners into Vegas. They don't clean well. They don't clean well, the smaller the smaller motels and that. Bed bugs. <sighs> I'm itching already. Oh, I don't like bed bugs. Why is it about the bugs, the little small bugs that want to enter <laughs> crevices and crannies? Hey, and one word, OSHA's, Ocean 13. Do you remember Ocean 13 where they went into that room and put bed bugs into that guy's bed that kind of chewed Only him? Oh, woke up with yes! rashes ah! the next day. He, wrote, he woke up with what? Rashes. rashes. Being bit by bed bugs. All over. It was... <laughs> Are we going to have to start checking each other in the morning? Uh, we're not checking each <laughs> no. other, you sick bugger. We're not doing it. But I will tell you this, bed bugs, you gotta watch out. What are some of the signs of bed bugs? Rashes. Okay. <laughs> what about in the bed before Same you get in? Uh, so on the, on the edge of the bed, like in the crevices, you're yeah. gonna see a lot of uh, you so know, tiny. Uh, tiny bugs and just you I know, will tell you, it, it helps to go there. to a, a reputable hotel, it's, it's right? It's gonna be gross. Right? Yes. Reputable? I mean, they well, have they um, a black they, light with you. They have mattress covers that are beg bud proof that you yes. can put over the top of mattress if you can't see any, you're a little freaked out by it. But I, I haven't I, gotten I, to the point when I travel. I'm not sure I believe those. I, I don't know. We are, we're, we're a Hilton uh, group. We love yes. the Hilton chains. Now, we do run across a bad one once in a while, but overall, we find that the Hiltons going up in California, the Hamptons, and those kind of things are generally a, clean. a cleaner place right. with newer facilities that I, that I like how they run. The Garden Inn's a little breakfast. Nobody, nobody's Shanghai a little breakfast. We like that. I like a little breakfast. Yeah, I, I, I will tell you the bed bugs. It, 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 everything is unsanitary once you... Once you have a problem with all the time. If, if yeah, anybody from Hilton ever watches this video, we do have a request, though, as a group. Bring it on. If Mike. there was a service you could provide that yeah. late at night one could call down and get a hot fudge sundae, we're not talking chocolate <sighs> syrup. 
just some hot fudge. This you know, is not hard to produce. This would be a great night snack for I, a bunch of chunky gentlemen that I are traveling that. around the country. Just a hot fudge I amen that. In fact, if you just had a container of microwavable hot fudge, we could make our own Sunday. It's the hot fudge. Is the there hot. anybody really drinking the coffee in the rooms? Why can't we just put a small mini jar of hot fudge in the rooms? You say it to and my I can heart. get ice cream down you there at the it. lobby. I totally get it. I want I like it. I want to be a part of it. Right, the lesson when you do the Big Bud lessons, there's going to be images of how to check in oh. this lesson. You'll be able to see what they look like, a close-up photos that will creep you out. And the video will be very good. So when it comes to the bed bugs, we've got you covered. When it comes to your bed, <laughs> we got and you. And the bug. your bugs. <laughs> we got you covered. All right, uh, one thing that I don't like is to be impaled. This next one is impalement has oh. its hair getting shafted, shish kebab, portrayed, uh, harpooned, pointed, stabbed. Uh, what other word can I think about? You've, you've used all the correct words. This would be terrible. Not a fan of this. Anybody, guys, when it comes to this kind of lesson, it's really for the construction, right, guys? Yeah, a lot of it is, you know, anywhere from uh, foundation bolts to, uh, uh, you know, gates uh, that are close to scaffolding that people <laughs> are falling off onto. Um, uncapped rebar. Uncapped rebar. Yes. Um, you know, nails and boards. Uh, Rick, have like you ever been shish kebobbed? Uh, fortunately, no. If not, uh, have you had a shish kebab? I've had a shish kebab, but I don't want to be shish kebab. Mm. Um, a shish kebab's really as good as they sound. You they're, know, they're, they're a lot of work to, to eat, put meat on they a stick. Are, yeah. They are, but they, yeah, I don't know. They t they look tasty. They're, they're, uh, they're probably a little overrated, I would say. But uh, I mean, if you're just putting meat on a like stick, that. I don't understand why you need the meat on the stick. Just throw it on the grill and cook it. Uh, and oftentimes they combine that meat with some vegetables and other things. It is more of a presentation too, right? Yes, yeah, but the meat's never cooked well. I it's, would say it, that's the true. The meat pieces, all of them, the meat pieces. Oh, I'm yeah, talking about meat pieces. I, Does I anyone have meat this. pieces? Uh, I have never had meat pieces. Have you? I, I do like a good shish kebab if I'm going to a Brazilian barbecue. You of know course. our favorite gauchos in Vegas. Everything I is shish that. kebab. Everything almost. is shish kebab. Gorgeous men walking around with sheets of meat on sticks. I, I just can't get enough of it. I, I, and, and by the way, shish kebabbing is not just the function of poking you through the leg or something, but it it's could be barbecue. a nail through the, uh, the foot, right? I was talking about some of the injuries. Yeah. You could be walking on something and have a nail go through your foot. And though it is a minor shishking, still. Could still give you... Uh, Tetanitis oh, or something. Oh, yeah, don't even but say when it. you think about being shish king, having a minor shish king is still, still bad. Nobody oh, it's wants totally to be bad. Minorly shish king. Oh, the minors turn into the majors. Get your foot cut off because of Once that. Once you tetanus. start going minors, you always go majors. Somebody too. sneak and stop you. All right, implement, in, in being impaled hazard, we've got that lesson Get covered for you. Please give us a call if that lesson doesn't meet your needs. Brewery safety. We're talking about breweries, especially <laughs> keg lifting. Kegger. Keg lifting safety. Did you know there's a machine that lifts kegs? I thought it was humans. College kids. No, Those are the kegger they, lifters. They got dollies built specifically for them. In fact, I have uh, one of our insurance partners specializes in uh, dealing with these microbreweries, and they were they had us write this lesson. Kegger. For, yes, for one of their clients and. We actually have several. So if you are in the brewery business, uh, we actually have a well, centrifuge safety and a bunch of lessons that mm. pertain to that. But yeah, you would, very refreshing. Yep, but uh, the old keg lifter. <laughs> the keg lifter is it's it's an electrical. It, it is is it manual or is it an electrical thing or? So first off, Mike, how heavy is a full ready to go keg? I worked at a uh, at a place when I was 18 that had kegs, yeah. and I would put them into people's car. I, yeah. I think a keg is relatively heavy. I, I, yeah, I mean, be right. when I look at a lifter, so, I go, it's got to be. talking about, an, a, 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 I think it's 40, 30, 40 pounds for an empty keg just oh, empty empty. by itself because it's it's aluminum. It's, it, right, it's right, it, right, They're right. made out of aluminum, yeah, right? They're generally yeah. aluminum. They're an aluminum keg, but then you fill it full of the liquid. gallons of liquid. How much does a keg hold? I'm not sure. A keg, I'm, I'm keg but I mean, it's, it's it, got to be it's over bigger, 100 pounds. It's bigger than a sparklets water bottle, and I mean that's that which and is that's five plastic. Gallons. I'm going to say 75 right. to 80 pounds. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's 75, 80 pounds. Seven, eight pounds a gallon. Wow, you, you got to be. What do you think? Am I wrong? There. 160 pounds. Allison back here, the great just but it's looked not it just, up. It's not just lifting 160 pound weight, right? Or barbell. It's the size of this yeah, thing. It's an awkward you get size. Your arm around it. Oh yeah, it's hard to pick. I have never lifted a keg, but it looks. You're wrapping your arms around it, it like that. You're yep. getting real close with it, getting yep. to know yep. it. 
Yep, I have been prepared. Feeling the cold against your chest? Yikes. Well, you're getting a little intimate there with that. Keg lifter. This is, like I said, a great lesson. If you need anything with regarding this, we've got you covered on lifting kegs. We don't want you to hurt your back. Or anything large, round, and uh, cold. If you need something like that, I can help you write a lesson on lifting that. You got this keg going down the stairs? You're dead. Oh, no. Come on, a keg down the stairs? Sure, guys. Lifting it down to a big party, drops it, boom. Stairs are done, and yeah. every so one of your friends. But you're going to have, like, yeah. monkey arms to get around oh, it. I mean, who's got, I mean, I... And Come be on. monkey strong just to lift it. Well, there you go. Monkeys are strong, Rick. They are strong. <laughs> yes. Generally, yes. Pound for pound. That's a, that's a key word Rick uses a lot, monkey strong, because monkeys are just naturally strong. And hairy. Okay, window cleaning safety. This is a tough one. Uh, a lot of window cleaners out there. These are the unspoken <laughs> heroes of clean windows. These guys keeping our buildings clean and everything going on with that. You got to have clean windows. Those little guys putting their fingers on the windows. I could cut my children's fingers off years ago. Yeah, but regarding window that. cleaning safety is, 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 you know, I was watching a show on the Dubai Tower, that world's oh. tallest building in Dubai. And they talk about because it's so high, the wind, they have guys who clean that building like 24 hours, like, like seven days a week. They're, I would imagine. They're cleaning some piece of it. But they have to pull them in because of the wind because they're swinging all over the place. It is such a hazardous job. Yeah. So, I mean, when you talk about window cleaning, just squeegeeing your own window, you have chemicals you have to worry about. In but Dubai, boy, aren't they making that village or that city that is in a straight line going down? That's what, uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. What do they call that thing? The uh, edge? I think it's I called know. the line. The line. I think it is the I've line, Sam. That is going to be a lot of cleaning going right. down that thing. But, but the higher the windows get, you've seen guys that are on the uh, Luxor in Vegas, oh, you know, terrible. on the side. or you couldn't or, pay me enough. Well, Rick, wait a minute. They could pay you enough. Now, Rick, I don't know that they Rick could. is not they a height guy, guy, right, Rick? Like, yes. He doesn't like heights. <laughs> what like about roller coasters? And he doesn't Rick? like conditioner on his back hair. He doesn't like that either. You don't like to soften it? No, he doesn't. He likes it bristly. Well, I'd have to grow it to know if I like it or not. But, but I'll tell you this. Those windows, I mean... You saw Tom Cruise. One of my favorite shots is him climbing that Dubai Everybody loves tower. Tom Cruise. Well, let me tell you this. That Dubai shot of him climbing Dubai on those, oh. You know why I like Tommy? Talk to me. Because he's dedicated to the team. Yeah, yeah, I, that good. Mission Impossible and that, I, that last that so uh, good. Uh, Top Gun was so yes, it was stinking good. good. A I lot can't. of times you see the next one and you're yep. like, yeah. no. Like, but I'm anxious for uh, Back to the Part Future two. 4. Oh, back, back to, the to the future. He's back not in the, Back to the Future. No, he's part. not. But but you know what? You gotta say you gotta God bless old Michael J. Fox there. I, I love this I, guy. I love. I'm it ready too. to see him coming back, yes, even with I his agree. Parkinson's. I, I am agree. excited to see. I agree. What he's doing. And Doc's still alive. Of course, Doc Brown's. Still Doc alive. stinking hell. He's just a, a mandatory part of the movie. You gotta. Have well, it. it's a good thing. But I'll I'll tell you this. Uh, window cleaning. Window cleaning. You know what? Back to the I future. I stink at window cleaning. And what comes with window cleaning? Mirror cleaning. I can't clean a mirror to save my life. My wife will not pass inspection. She makes me do it three do or four times. Do you ever feel times. like that you're not doing it well because you don't want to do it again? Do you ever like, feel like you're... I like mean, I you, don't know how to fold shirts? Yes. <laughs> right. I think he's just cheating on that. Maybe that's the key. All right. Window cleaning safety. That's what we got for you guys. Let us know if you need more of those. All right. The next one we wrote... I think we wrote this because of the people in our office, to be very honest oh. with you. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think this was anything else. We've got people out there that Weak are, people. Weak I people. I think they're deficient in iron or yeah, something. something. Why are people layers. so cold in an office that the thermostat is set to 70 degrees? Mike, I don't get it, but we have people dressed for the Arctic. Dressed to hobble with and talk with penguins and polar bears because they've got, it seems like, everything but earmuffs, gloves. And the office is at 70 degrees. I, I don't get it. I, this I is what it. happens. Uh, there are certain people, and I'm not going to name them, but there are certain people in our office that come in with sandals, no socks on. Yes. They, yeah. They've got some sort of yoga pants on they, that give no insulation for insulation warmth or at anything. All. They, they come in in a tank top yes. or something yes. or these thin shirts, and you're like, I'm freezing. I'm like, well... well you're not dressed well. You came in. You came in exercise gear. You know, get dressed for work gear. I totally get yeah, it. Yeah, I don't get this, but I do spend a lot of money on these space heaters, and they go into the desks, and they are a problem because you got tissues. A girl may be sitting there. She throws a tissue under there. Bing, bang, boom. Not all the guys use tissue. I think they use their sleeves. To be can, very honest can I, with you, can I also uh -huh. say one more thing? Get these space guys. heaters. Um, cause a real problem yeah. with our electrical system. And I know you think, well, that's dumb, right? Well, no, because every desk has a certain amount of power. Yes. And the amount of power this thing pulls 
Pops the brake or shuts down everybody. It very well can, Ugh. depending on how many you get in a room. It's awful. So if every every person needs one, and I don't want to single this out just no. for the women, like it's a women problem. It's not. it's not. But more common than not, we do find a lot of the ladies are having a need for space heaters. What are the some of the things we do in our office for these people, Steve, that are not weak, like you said, but are uh, probably low on uh, listen. Iron Circulation, or something. I don't iron, know what the heck it is. Layers. Uh, what we do is we have uh, blankets, electric blankets. We have found that uh, they heat better when wrapped in a nice, cuddly, God safety blanket, Mike, and turned to their proper temperature. They can sit there and in their just, own warmth. In yeah. their own warmth, without having a heater that. You know, maybe Kills everybody. It, it heats the whole group. We, we've tried everything. We ordered God Safety Snuggies. Yep. We, we did With a hoods. lot of things. I, we've tried a lot. The electric blanket, though, for their lap really helps out. The little two foot by yes, two foot? Yes. What is it? Three foot by three well, foot? Well, either one, Mike, it helps. It helps them because a lot of our people now have those. Now, they if they them. need a sweatshirt, a lot of them leave a jacket here. Or a sweatshirt, so if it, they feel like that, they can put it on, take it off, Mike. Did you know Sam got asked yesterday if we would buy God Safety sweatshirts that the girls could wear in the office? Uh, some uh, nice hoodies. Sure. I'd like, would God Safety buy me a suit that I could wear around, too? I mean, Why would on. I buy you a suit? My point is, look, how many other clothes <laughs> are we going to buy for people because they want to be warm? I think it's tough. Steve isn't as uh, sweet as some of us. I am sweet, but we, come on. We bought Socks them. Socks and underwear and pants. I want God Safety everything. Come we on. bought them uh, Electric blankets. Right. And uh, I, I think that that should suffice these. Now, uh, I know we have jackets, right, for going outside, but not for inside. No, I would agree with you on that. Okay. I love Mars staff, and if they're cold, let's give them blankets. Okay. I, 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 they do like the blankets, case, though. They, they work hard, and they're due some warmth. And I totally blankets. agree. Believe me, we're not all heartless buggers. Well, in we fact, want we, everybody we, to be comfortable. We, we tell our office manager, Jacob, which we dearly love, yes. he makes popcorn at 10 o'clock oh. in the morning, and he also makes it at 2.30 in the afternoon. Best popcorn and on the so planet. And so we're anywhere. in a constant state of trying to be good to our employees. If you've ever worked in the office of God Safety, you will find your life could not be better. I'm just making that clear. We have a, we have a soda fountain, an eight beverage rotating Eight beverage machine, very tasty. And we take votes on it uh, every other month or so when votes soda runs out, what they want. We do. Right? All right, that's what we've got going on with the lessons today. Those are the lessons we've created over the couple months. And I, once again, thank you for your help in letting us really build these for you. It's something that we really enjoy, and uh, we, we just can't get enough of it. As a second-generation safety business from family, we, we really run our business like a family and taking care of our employees and doing everything we need to make sure you guys are safe in your facilities. So if you are an individual business, if you're an insurance company, or you are some sort of staffing company, whatever it is, if you have a client base and you'd like to be partners with ours, you can give us a call. Rick holds a lot of partners, and he does for us out of the state of California, and Rick cover, and Steve covers the larger partners that really are scattered across the country. And so between the two of us, and then Sam is training the on-site staff in California, we can take care of all the needs that you have. Please look at us at gotsafety.com, gotsafetylight.com, either one of those, and we'd love to take care of you. Thanks for watching today.